Greetings, one and all two universes. In this show, we will analyze the stats, weapons, and abilities of two fighters to see who would win in a battle to the death. Many people have predicted the outcome, so let's see who guessed right and who guessed wrong. And be sure to stay tuned after the episode so you can see the next fighters and make your predictions down in the comment section below or in a video response. And who knows, your comment or video response could be featured in the very next episode. With all that said, let's meet our two fighters. Yoshimitsu, the ninja leader of the Manji clan, and Raiden, the cyborg ninja who stole my haircut. You know the old saying, don't bring a knife to a gunfight? Well, these two found a loophole. In times of war, they brought powerful swords for cutting down their foes. But only one ninja can be a cut above the rest. <laughs> Good one, Leo. This is Universes. Imagine riding on horseback, traveling across long distances, riding for miles, on a quest to steal from the rich and give to the poor so they can survive. Sort of like Robin Hood and his band of merry men, but with ninjas! Well, that's exactly what the Manji clan is up to with their fearless leader, Yoshimitsu. He spent most of his time performing good deeds for others and assisting Dr. Boskinovich after he saved Yoshimitsu's life. If someone ever tried to get in the way of his good deeds, like Brian Fury for example, Yoshimitsu would cut them down with his blade, also named Yoshimitsu. But to avoid confusion, let's call it the Spirit Sword. The reasoning why is because the sword feeds on evil to gain power. Yoshimitsu uses it to slay the wicked and keep the sword in perfect balance. If the blade starves or eats too much, it will feed on Yoshimitsu's mental state and make him lose control. It's not too often when he has to worry about though, since he has a special set of skills for destroying evil. Despite having a blade, Yoshimitsu uses a surprising amount of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Acrobatic flips, powerful kicks to launch opponents in the air, or he can even spin himself silly, slapping his foes across the face the whole time. He saves his long, powerful sword slashes to catch his foes off guard. But even if they were on guard and expecting a simple sword slash, they may not get that as Yoshimitsu has all kinds of fancy sword tricks. He can sit atop the handle, balancing the blade on the ground so he can hop on his foes like a pogo stick. He can even rotate his wrists to fly with his sword like a helicopter blade. And if he thinks he's going down, down, then he's bringing you down with him as he'll just flat out turn around and stab himself right in front of you to get you impaled as well. Now you'd normally see this as just plain dumb, but it's okay, Yoshimitsu can actually heal himself with a chant. That's right, his fancy sword skills aren't the only tricks up his sleeve. As a ninja, he can teleport, create after images, and even turn invisible. He can glide across the ground and spit poison at his opponents as well. But you're probably still curious about that spirit sword I was so vague about earlier. Like I said before, Yoshimitsu must keep this blade in perfect balance. If it starves or eats, too much it will feed on his mental state causing him to go insane. The more evil it eats, the more powerful it becomes. In a what if scenario, Yoshimitsu went completely insane after absorbing Azazel's evil and his sword gained so much power that he sliced an entire temple in half with a single swing. However, even when the blade is at its normal state and Yoshimitsu has to apply his own force, he still has some pretty good feats. He can split Brian Fury in half with a clean slice, a guy who's able to survive blows from tanks and a helicopter explosion without even flinching. Yoshimitsu's ninja skills make him extremely stealthy. He'll sneak up behind foes and deliver a speedy finishing blow. Yoshimitsu's quick enough to dodge lasers and fast enough to outrun minigun fire. But even when he does get hit, though, he's tough enough to take the shots as his armor makes bullets bounce off like nothing. These attributes combined with his stealth make him one silent deadly killer. If you're a selfish man filled to the brim with riches, keep an eye out for the Manji clan. They're coming for you. Raiden's had it pretty rough. In fact, I could fill this entire bio section with unfortunate events. But to save time, let's just get right into the specifics. Raiden, also known as Jack, at a very young age had his parents killed right before he was immediately swooped up by Solidus Snake. 
As you can guess, he's not a very nice guy, as he's the one who killed Jack's parents in the first place. Jack was forced to be a child soldier and killed countless people by the age of 10. But when all was said and done in that war, he decided to join Foxhound in order to right his wrongs. But along the way, he met a cutie by the name of Rose who ended up being his spy, but she really did love him because they had a kid, and it's crazy, okay? The point is, he got revenge on the killer of his parents, he got his girl and his kid, and he got turned into a cyborg ninja! Yep, if you thought the craziness would slow down for at least a second, you were dead wrong. Raiden was already a death machine before, so it's hard to imagine how he could get any worse. Well, now he has the ability to generate electricity, he's agile enough to run on walls, he's stronger and faster, and he got a fancy sword for cutting down his foes. This sword is the Murasama, a high-frequency weapon with the ability to vibrate. <laughs> no wonder he has so many fangirls. Anyways, these aren't just any normal vibrations. These high-frequency vibrations weaken the molecular structure of just about anything, so Raiden can cut through just about everything. And if Raiden for some reason needs more power behind this weapon, he can enter Blade Mode. This mode slows down how he sees time and enhances his reflexes to ridiculous levels, allowing him to cut any way he wants with advanced precision. And if he still needs more power, he'll return to his old Death Machine personality as he enters Ripper Mode. His mental state breaks down as he only desires for more blood, which can be quite draining. While it is a useful tactic, Raiden must be careful. He's part cyborg now, and like all machines, he can run out of juice. But that's mostly a last resort, as he can still do quite a lot of things without it. One of these things is creating his own self-taught fighting style involving swordplay and breakdancing. He's fast enough to outrun a bullet train and can outpace Tengu soldiers who have been calculated to have hypersonic reactions as they can deflect any gun. And it gets even faster in Ripper mode. Credit to Lord X Kano for this, as Raiden can reach speeds of up to Mach 4000 judging by how many times he can swing his sword during a cat's jump. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, the dude can jump on missiles for crying out loud. He's powerful enough to slice through a Metal Gear Ray and the even more powerful Metal Gear Excelsis. Both weapons that are much tougher than any normal military machine and can deal physical forces of over a kiloton. And shortly after this, he was able to defeat Senator Armstrong, someone who was once able to overpower and outpace Raiden even while in Ripper mode. Defeating all these bad guys and deadly killing machines is child's play for a cyborg ninja. But let's see how he handles someone more like himself. Let's take a look at your predictions while I calculate the results. Actually, why don't I give you a demonstration? I think it's time for Jack to let her rip! Hey, what's up, my dudes? Wrestler456 here, back with yet another Universe's Prediction. Yoshi Mitsu from Tekken versus Raiden from Metal Gear. I'm so happy he's using Yoshi Mitsu. I love him so much. So underrated. And I do feel like he's going to win this next fight. Uh, why? Uh, well, for starters, I just want to say I do know Raiden takes the strength area pretty easily. Uh, he threw a Metal Gear Ray. Like that, like <laughs> Yoshi Mitsu has never showed anything close to that type of, you know, pure strength before. Sorry, guys, my eye really is just. Uh, in terms of uh, speed, I say Yoshi Mitsu is way faster. Like he moves so fast, it creates several after images, and he can dodge bullets, lasers, the works. And uh, I don't feel like Raiden quite stacks up to that, as far as I can remember. Uh, in terms of durability, I feel like it is a tie between. In terms of durability, like Yoshimitsu has has tanked a lot, you know, laser shots from Brian and bullets from Brian, and he straight up dodges them. And uh, you know, Raiden can fight with one arm. Enough said. He loves pain, so uh, I feel like it's a tie in terms of durability. Uh, what else? In terms of arsenal, it's pretty even. Uh, Raiden does use guns and such, but honestly, that's not gonna help whatsoever against Yoshimitsu, who can dodge bullets pretty damn easily, all things considered. And in terms of experience, I, I, I think, again, even, I'm not completely sure how long Yoshimitsu has been doing what he's doing. I know Raiden has been a child soldier before, so I think that minimum is even. Pretty sure. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but yeah, I feel like Yoshimitsu can't take it. Uh, Raiden also has like a fuel supply 
that that can run out, and if it runs out, that's pretty much game over. And I feel like Yoshimitsu has the durability to tank his hits and then finish him off when his time runs out. So that's my prediction. Yoshimitsu, my man, you got it. All right, peace out, y'all. Cool, no key here, guys. Bring you my next universe's prediction. We got Yoshi Mitsu from Tekken versus Raiden from Metal Gear. Let's get down to business. You know, Yoshi Mitsu is a badass, folks. His sword style, you know, his style of fighting involves a blend of ninjutsu samurai sword style. He hits you with a blend of those kind of slashes and strikes. So some kind of ninjutsu samurai sword style. It's pretty epic, actually. Fast enough to react to bullets and most likely slice bullets in half. I can definitely see him doing that. He's actually very strong, strong enough to hold himself up with his metal hand with his, and on the, with the tip of his freaking sword and basically hold himself up like that. That's a feat, that's a feat of strength in its own right, folks. Um... He uses his sword to impale people. He does a lot. Of, he does rapid, rapid sword swings, swings and slashes. He goes up against some of the heavy hitters in Tekken, folks. Very swift. So he is. He's fast, able to react to bullets. He's physically dominant to a lot of Tekken characters. He uses a ninjutsu samurai sword style. He's an incredible character. Moving on down the line to Raiden from Metal Gear. Raiden from Metal Gear, aka Jack the Ripper himself. And his sword, Marasama. A badass sword. It actually weakens his opponents, so to speak. Weakens their molecular structure, something, something along those lines. Now, he's actually very fast in his own right, folks. Fast enough to run on walls. Run on very long, lengthy walls very very strong very strong being able to actually throw around a thousand tons folks I mean close to a thousand tons if not right at a thousand tons give or take he's pretty strong he's able to toss that stuff kind of weight around throw it um, so all together folks I'm going with Raiden for my next universe's prediction like, it's really going to be a close match, you know, and Raiden might not be as skilled of a swordsman. Him being skilled, though, very skilled, but maybe not as skilled of a swordsman. Um, I say they're both on par as far as speed, but I say Raiden is definitely physically stronger and more physically dominant, physically dominant, yes, to, and his sword, his sword, how it weakens his opponents. So all together, folks, I'm going with Raiden for my next universe's prediction. Let me know what you think down below. As always, have a blessed day. Leave a like if you enjoy. Peace! And the results are in. The winner is... Raiden! Oh no, a Tekken character loses right after a Street Fighter character won. Who am I and what have I done with the real me? Let's take a look at these results while I make sure my brain hasn't been replaced with a cyborg ninja brain. Now one thing that may be confusing all of you is Yoshimitsu's stats. Usually when I bring up the Tekken verse, I mention the Jack Robots in their Mach 5000 speeds, country level stats, and how everyone can scale to them considering they're the grunts of the verse, and most other characters are capable of defeating them. But that's the thing, Yoshimitsu has never ever canonically battled a Jack Robot before, and in Tekken 6's scenario campaign, he was a bonus stage making him one of the very few characters who's never ever battled Lars either. Yoshimitsu is one of the very few characters unable to scale up to the insane stats of the the rest of the verse. And while he does have the capabilities to defeat Brian Fury who can, it's unlikely to say speed and strength are the cause. Yoshimitsu gets by with his stealth and relies on landing sneak attacks on his foe's weak spots. But whenever his foe knows where he is or when he has to engage in actual combat, It 
doesn't go well for him. But how on earth does he stack up to Raiden? I mean, even without scaling, he's still able to outpace minigun fire and slice through Brian Fury. Now, while Yoshimitsu slicing through Brian Fury may be impressive as he can survive blows from military weapons without a scratch, Raiden can slice through Metal Gears, which are much stronger than your average tank. Not only that, but Raiden's vibrating mood Osama would be more than capable of cutting through Yoshimitsu's bulletproof armor. There's also their mentally destroyed states where Yoshimitsu is able to destroy an entire temple with a single slice, and Raiden can enter Ripper Mode. While Yoshimitsu's state has more strength, Ripper Mode has thousands of times more speed. Not to mention Ripper Mode is much easier to access. Yoshimitsu only got to where he was by absorbing Azazel's evil. And while Raiden may be able to run out of energy, there's no way Yoshimitsu would last long enough to see that happen. Yoshimitsu may have a lot of tricks up his sleeves, but not all of them are useful. Like his healing factor, for example. To do this, he needs to stand still and chant to himself. Not only does this leave him very open, but it's very slow in healing him too. And while Yoshimitsu is skilled against other martial artists, he doesn't know how to handle other ninjas. Even Kunimitsu, whom he knows like the back of his hand, is able to trick him. Raiden would be no different. Yoshimitsu won't be cut any slack anytime soon. The winner is... Raiden! Get ready for the next battle! Oh, you're so fat. Oh, why are you so fat? Why are these people so fat? Yes, this is the best trailer I could come up with.